So the Cleveland Cavaliers came into this season with heavy expectations and they started out very hot, but now they are coming back down to earth a little bit. But one player who has absolutely stood out for this team is Donovan Mitchell. And he is putting up unreal MVP type of numbers and nobody is talking about it. In this video, I'm once again going to be talking all about Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers because they are such a fun team to watch. And once they get some experience together and Darius Garland gets out of his slump, they are going to be unbeatable. With the NBA season finally here, I'm going to be making so much content and I would really appreciate your support. It takes only 5 seconds to like and subscribe, plus you can always change your mind. I'm on the road to 10k subscribers, and I know you all can help me get there very fast. So the Cleveland Cavaliers have recently been in a bit of a slump, but I'm still confident they are going to turn it around. Their recent losses to the Los Angeles Clippers and Sacramento Kings were just embarrassing, and I'm going to talk all about them later. Anyways, when the Cavs traded for Donovan Mitchell, it really shook things up in the NBA, and that trade was the talk of the offseason. The main reason people talked about it so much is because everyone thought Mitchell was going to end up on the Knicks. Cleveland has never really been talked about too much by the media since the LeBron days, and even now, it's getting so ridiculous how Mitchell is putting up these kinds of numbers, but you don't see his name anywhere globally. I know Giannis and Luka are going to be at the top of the MVP leaderboards because they are unreal, but Mitchell is averaging 32 points per game along with 4.2 rebounds and almost 6 assists per game while shooting a scorching 45% from behind the arc. Everyone can keep ignoring him if they want to, but at some point in the season, Donovan is going to get his recognition and once the Cavs figure things out like I said, they will be unbeatable. Anyways, as I was going to get to, I know I can't ignore the two really bad losses the Cavs just had against LA and Sacramento. Starting with the Clippers game, the Cavs were actually shooting the ball well and scoring at will, but for some reason their defense just never showed up at all. I'm not sure if it had to do with being out west for the first time, or if they were somehow tired, but the effort level just wasn't there. And honestly, I think it's a very good sign that we were still leading for most of the game despite the poor effort, that's just how much talent this team has. The Cavs were actually leading this game by double digits at one point, but then they had a complete meltdown in the final minutes of this game, and they went ice cold, but really inexperience and bad clock management was the reason they blew this game. There was no reason for them to be taking shots so early in the shot clock, and I don't even care if they were wide open. It's just not what you do, and I think it was a good learning experience for them. The Clippers just clogged the paint and hoped for the best, and the Cavs kept helping them out by shooting and making horrible cross-court passes, and then once LA got the game to within 5, Darius Garland completely panicked and got dribble happy and committed a turnover that ultimately led to a Paul George and one and a complete change in momentum. Darius Garland has really been struggling ever since he came back from his eye injury and he only has 25 combined points in his last two games. I know it's a small sample size and I do think that eye is still bothering him, but the chemistry of Mitchell and Garland just hasn't fully been there yet and they've really struggled on defense with their size, but they have so much talent that I'm not too worried about them. Moving on to the Kings game, the Cavs really struggled to get the bigs involved inside and in the lob game, and credit to the Kings, they had a great game plan and shut everything down, but the Kings also relied on nobodies getting red hot, but that seems to be a trend for this Cavs team, they just have really bad perimeter defense due to their lack of size. In this game, Darius Garland was especially bad, only scoring 6 points on really poor shooting, but I'm done bashing Garland, because he's going to figure it out, and in Cleveland, we love him. Anyways, staying with that Kings game, the Cavs just never got momentum, and the moment that stood out to me is when they were finally down by 1, and they got the ball with 10 seconds left in the 3rd quarter, and Jetty Osmond dribbled the ball up and turned it over, which led to a 3 at the buzzer, and it was a 5 point swing, and you could tell there was a big energy shift. So some really bad recent losses for this Cavs team, but we do have to remember that they have an 8-3 record right now, which is near the top of the league, but I understand why it feels so disappointing, because they should be 10-1, or at least 9-2. At the end of the day, this team has Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen all in the starting lineup, so eventually when they get going, it's going to be scary for the rest of the league. Moving on, now I want to talk about Evan Mobley, because he has received a ton of unnecessary hate from casual fans. It's pretty clear that Mobley isn't going to be a huge scorer for this team this season, but that is perfectly okay, and that doesn't mean he's regressed as a player. The Cavs just have a lot better options to get the ball in the basket right now, and Mobley is still super slim, 
so he has trouble gaining ground in the paint, but he has shown flashes of what he can do. I still believe he's a max contract, once in a generation type of player just from his defense alone. This year he's been spending a lot of time guarding shooting guards and small forwards in the ISO game, which is just insane to think about when you put him into perspective of what normal 7 footers can do. He even clamped up Jalen Brown to help this team get a huge statement win last week. While I do agree that I would like to see Mobley get more aggressive on the offensive end, he's very unselfish and he's a guy that every team would do anything to have, so I don't want to see any more unnecessary hate on Mobley. I'm really hoping this team can just stay healthy throughout the year. It will be nice to get Rubio back to lead the bench, we could really use that leadership. Also, I want to find a new starting small forward, but that's just me. I know Karis LeVert puts up decent numbers and he plays very hard the whole entire game, but if you just watch him closely, he's very inefficient and for some weird reason, I just don't like him that much. But I wouldn't be mad by any means if he was our small forward for the full season. But the Cavs are just missing that glue guy. I even think Dean Wade would be a better fit at small forward as a reminiscent of Laurie Markkinen last year. Speaking of Laurie Markkinen, it's great to see him absolutely balling in Utah. He's putting up all-star numbers over there. But I don't want to hear anyone say a word about the Cavs losing the Mitchell trade because it was a pure win-win for both teams and Laurie was never going to blossom on this team because he had more of a limited role and just did his job. I really don't have that much more to say in this video. I still have complete faith in the Cavs. They will get hot and it's going to be fun to watch. People just love to overreact these days. I think us Cleveland fans might have been a little bit spoiled because of the LeBron days that some of us actually forgot it's very hard to successfully rebuild a team but Kobe Altman was able to become a contender in 3 years thanks to some things going our way. That's all I have to say in this video, there's just been so many things going on in the NBA so far this season and it's been fun to watch. I covered a lot and obviously there is so much more to talk about. I'm going to continue to pump out as much content as possible for you guys, so I would really appreciate it if you would join me along for the ride. I'm on the road to 10k subscribers, and I believe y'all can help me get there. And also, one more thing, make sure to comment below what you want to see next. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and until next time, I'll see you all later.